We are all worthy, strong, and committed, and we are ready to go beyond our own limitations. Welcome back, my friends and loved ones, to the Rebel Minded Podcast. I'm your host, Zach, with my co-host, Thor, of course, and I'm here as a friend, a creator, a powerlifter, and a provocateur. And we are here to learn to question the one thing that keeps us from our best, ourselves. Join me as we dive deep to question and strengthen our communication and our vulnerability, create a healthier mind to commit to our goals, and how to give more to our lovers and the world. We're going to face the uncomfortable truths of what it means to be authentically and uniquely flawed, but awesome humans. So, let's get rebel-minded. Also, I'll bring in stories of all things powerlifting, Thor shenanigans, and probably some embarrassing mishaps. Let's do this. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. A beautiful day for a neighbor. <laughs> Does anybody remember Mr. Rogers? I I vaguely, vaguely remember Mr. Rogers. Just bits and pieces of it. It was so calm and so chill. And I don't know if I want to say comforting because it was almost odd to me even at that age it, it felt weird to watch as a child but um uh, how's everybody doing today how was how was the week uh i myself am a couple weeks out from a uspa powerlifting meet one that i didn't think that i was going to be a part of one that um i my coach said that i was competing in before i knew i was competing in it and uh sometimes we need those type of people sometimes we need that type of push uh, so this week, did you, did you push yourself? Did you do some crazy shit? Did you make yourself uncomfortable? Did you ask some questions? Did you ask yourself some questions? Did you fuck with other people, other people's heads and ask them some questions? Uh, you know, you know, that's the, that's the idea here on the RMP is to question the fuck out of everything. So I hope that you did. I hope that you stood your ground. I hope that you did something that you love. And I hope that you did it for the sake of just presence and self-care and passion and desire. And you allowed yourself to be a little bit of the you that was 8, 10, 12, before the world started pushing responsibility on you. And I've got some more content coming up relating to exactly that. Um, but something I want to really focus on today is self-love because as we keep attacking this problem of the stereotypical male, of today's stereotypical male, which I think is, is finally starting to transition, you know, we're starting to see some growth. There is a lot of self-love that men don't have because of what they've been told to be. And we can blame it on past generations. We can blame it on whatever we need to. Um, there's a time and place for most things, I think, even if in the end we figure out they no longer work, which is okay, right? But men have not been able to grow very much lately. They've not had very much support lately. They've not had a whole lot of, you know, taking of their hand and allowing them to be whatever they wanted to be. And you're not, not allowed to speak of their inner child and, you know, their passions and their insecurities and their vulnerability and whatever it is that we are born with and like molded and that's whatever's molded into our character, right? At some point, the world told us to shut that, shut that off. And so all this instability in men, all this, all this fire uh, and, and, and burning and, and, pillaging of the world, in my opinion, comes from men that are hurting. So I want to focus on something today that I think is majorly important. I hope you also take something from this. Because in a way, I think that the more men love themselves, the better effect they're going to have on the world, the more they're going to change the world. So without stalling anymore, and without uh, making Thor any more impatient because I told him we were going for a truck ride and now he's staring at me as I record. Uh, let's move on to this week's episode. 
This is episode 59, Men's Self-Love. There's a world that lies beneath the one that we see every day. And within it, there lies emotions and desires and struggles and doubts. Things that are not jobs, they're not hobbies, they're not fitness, media, progress picks, or daily tasks. Honestly, I don't even know what to call it. But it's... It's the unseen. It's the bunker of things that make us contemplate life, who we are, and and what the point of any of it actually is. Unfortunately, I think that even though introspection and emotional intelligence and existentialism are kind of important, I also think we end up guarding too much of who we are out of a fear of not being what the above world wants us to be. Some sort of creation of what we are and what we need from others is too much or that it can or should be done without help. How the fuck does anyone decide that what we want to ask and what we want to be is not good enough to present to others? Is it society and culture? Is it parents that tried to force us to be fitting? Is it both? Is it pure instinct? Like primal fear of survival and exile? In a way, I I think it's all of them. And it might depend on how much by who we are and what we've experienced individually. But whatever the fuck it is, whatever the fuck it is, I think it's important to at least keep the doors open to this bunker. Throw away the fucking key and allow others in and our desires and our intentions out. At some point, we closed off ourselves to everyone else, which meant we were closing off ourselves to all sorts of mental and emotional aid, to progress, to success, to full dimensional human experience. Yeah, believe it or not, you can't do this shit alone. I don't care what you've been taught. Yeah, you can build a business, be wealthy, become an athlete, be something quote unquote important. But even then, you need other people to buy your product, to gain knowledge from, to get investment from. You need people. And that's just surface level modern human shit. It's just modern human needs. If you have all of that, you can still be, and probably are, empty inside. You probably experience pain and depression, mental fatigue, doubt, anger, and what I like to call the black hole effect. And the only thing that will change that is people. People to show you love, affection, support, perspective, challenge, and comparison. Try being the last human on earth. Could you accomplish anything? Could you gain wealth? Could you gain success? No. Those ideas are just social construct, and social construct takes humans to create. What's my point? Is that humans need humans. Humans have always needed other humans. We need them for things above the surface and below. Men of the world are suffering today. My theory? Men are in a pandemic of not loving themselves. And men that don't love themselves attack the world in response or shut themselves off from it. A lot of us have great ideas of what could save the world. They include many things that are true to that fact. And I myself believe that better men will save the world. Men that love the world and make it stronger. Men that don't use the world but help it thrive. Men that take the hands of the people and pull them up rather than crush the hands that might compete against them. So, what is self-love? Of course, I go to Google to formally define it, but self-love is a regard of one's own well-being and happiness. To me, beyond that, my definition of self-love comes in as a truth to who we are and thriving within that. It means creating boundaries that give you time to invest in your own beliefs and desires. It means autonomy. It means understanding who you are and being confident and affectionate to your unique ways of thinking and giving yourself to the world. And self-love has a lot more to do with others than we think it does. Love itself is gained by how we relate to others, how we connect with them, and how we learn to understand and desire things different from us. We learn as children to not have emotions, but to understand them. Emotions are installed by default. Then, What the fuck happened? I'll tell you. Grooming happened. Boys were told to feel and what not to feel, which by majority was the not. 
Boys were told that what was human was unacceptable in a stage in their lives where they had no idea how much of a lie that actually was. Boys that were supposed to become men became something else. They became adults that were convinced that wealth, stability, and healthy sex life meant that they were mature and that they were everything that they were expected to be. Boys were not only told, but shown by the modern world that to move from boyhood to manhood, they had to become less. 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 Does that even make sense? Nah, bro. Less emotion, less vulnerability, less pain, less in touch with our inner selves. The only problem is you can't be rid of these things. You can only cage them, giving off a majorly dark and negative reflection of them. Those reflections are numbness and anger and violence, irritability, lack of empathy, intimidation, and suppression, all towards other humans. So why is it that we need self-love so desperately? Well, like I said before, the less we love, the more it reflects on how we treat the world. Men need self-love because they act. Men need more self-love because our action has a huge impact on our families and our friendships and our full potential. Men with self-love will love their partners better. They will do more, they will create more, and they will be a light for people who struggle. And the less men have self-love, the more we will attack, destroy, ignore, dismantle, and break the people that love us, the empires that are standing, and the more we become something that the world fears. Now, how do we get it then? After so much time of being only a piece of what we could be, how do we gain what we mostly don't have? The start begins with questioning what we are doing right now. Question what we feel and question what we do. Men are full of skills and love direction and purpose and attainment all magnificent things and within that we find contentment and with that we become overly sure of who we are and what we do we stop questioning who we are because the world has given us what we've used to feel okay about ourselves we become too arrogant to listen or to be challenged we lose our ability to have humility and our ability to be wrong we have to be able to remove ourselves from our greatness long enough to question if it's the right direction when you're able to question what it is that you are freely without building a defense, which is crazy important for this next step, by the way, then the next thing you have to do is question the relationships you have with your friends and your family and the rest of the world around you. Now, why? Why do this? Because the environment we are in highly affects how we think and feel throughout the days. Why would we question our friendships? Because the environment we are in highly affects how we think and feel throughout the days. And that environment can include people and things that are crazy toxic to the progress that you want to make in your life. So what are your friendships like? Just because they're jovial, free-spirited, comedic, and even challenging doesn't mean that they're healthy for you. If you deep down are struggling, if you're self-shaming and self-deprecating, if you are internally angry and depressed, you could be using your friendships to actually get away from such feelings. You could be using all the excitement and lightheartedness of your friendships to avoid what actually needs your attention. Your friendships should make you feel challenged, and they should be strong enough to endure vulnerability. Can you talk to your male friends about anything? Or are soft feelings avoided? Can you confidently share your emotions, order your friends change the subject, call you gay, or tell you to stop being a baby? Can you be broken in front of other men and not have them diminish you or leave you alone to handle it on your own? Friendships are fucking great, man. We use them to almost always have camaraderie, to go on adventures, to laugh, and to release, which is perfect. But that's only half of the puzzle piece. Can you rely on other men to be more than that for you? If your friendships are always pissing contests and drunk shenanigans or boasting and comparing each other, you may be in dead-end friendships that only keep your dark side chained and caged rather than helping you tame it. Don't only use this on your friendships. Do this with your relationship, your family, and your work environment, especially your work environment. If you're surrounded by negativity, stress, or pressure to always be something perfect or emotionless, 
You'll never find the peace or support or clarity you need to find your happiness. This won't be an easy transition either. You may lose people you didn't think you'd ever have to, but self-love means you have to make sure you love yourself first rather than sacrifice it to others who don't understand your boundaries, which takes us to boundaries. Boundaries can include a lot of things. It can be who and where you spend your free time, as well as how you allow people to speak to you. And it's all important, but you have to be strong enough to tell yourself and others you won't tolerate what disrespects your own time and anything that diminishes your being. This can be hard to decipher as to what counts as disrespect or diminishing. For example, rarely do I ever have to deal with people making fun of my size. I've always been small, like five foot tall small. That's because I've surrounded myself with people that see beyond it. It doesn't bother them, and they have no reason to attack me in order to feel better about themselves. But when the issue does arise, I do two things. I beat them to the punch, for one. I make fun of myself. This may not seem any better, but what it does is it gives me control. They are no longer the ones that have the chance to be the witty comedian. I do. So that power switch starts to eliminate much more of a discussion relating to the topic. It's a little Jedi mind trick that lessens the ability to keep a conversation that is negative or disrespectful. And most people will never know that that's what you've done. Second, you are always in control of your space and your words. If something bothers you, say it. If they make fun of you more or tell you to stop being so sensitive, they don't respect you. I will leave an environment. I will always make sure I have an out which leads to you being in control of your space. Leave. Remove yourself from people that don't give a fuck about your feelings. You don't have to tolerate more than or anything you don't want to. The world of men has been taught to endure everything, to swallow your words and your desires and everything that is hurtful to you and act like it doesn't bother you. And you've convinced yourself that it doesn't because that's the definition of man, I guess. Or fucking not. Don't be convinced by the world's definitions. And if you're worried about being weak, I dare you to start working on your boundaries. Tell me how much stronger, more confident, and manly you actually feel when you tell people no. Tell them to respect you and refuse to stick around their bullshit. Because that's way fucking harder than acting like you don't give a shit. When you change your environment, you have to start replacing it with things that work. Things that make a difference in a positive way. Find the right people and honestly state your boundaries. Be true in who you are and test your ability to be real with people. This is going to include how you think. Internal and external environment are equally important. We can't just delete negativity and have a blank space. It has to be replaced by what you want. It has to be replaced by the positivity. This is not an always easy process, so be patient. As annoying as most men get with things like mantras and positive self-talk, journaling and meditation... They are the exact positive opposite of what you're trying to replace. So it doesn't matter what you decide to partake in. I really don't care. But you have to replace the negative self-talk, the self-shaming, and the critic inside of you with something. The fact is, you are constantly having an internal conversation with yourself, and you'll never be able to get away from it. Your thoughts are what impact your mood, your actions, and your desires. So we have to start working on what will take place of those conversations that only hold you back and attack you. I journal every morning. The best part of journaling is you have to slow down the talk. Whatever you want to put on paper, even if it's pain, it takes time to physically write it out. It slows down your brain. It keeps you in control and it gives you real ability to process it. It makes you mindful of where your brain is actually at. Now I also have a mantra of sorts, I guess. And it's stuck on my bathroom mirror, a place that I can't avoid seeing it. It says, I am enough. And for me, that covers all the things that I have to remind myself of. Things like I am capable, I am a good human, and that I'm trying my best. So what these two things among the others do for me is start my morning disrupting the old bullshit that used to set my day and give me a fucked up attitude. So find your own or steal these from me. What matters is that you're intentionally disrupting your usual brain assessments every morning. Do it. Next step is this. Take care of yourself. Men thrive so well off of routine, having direction, and having challenge. 
Do things that take care of you physically. Make a gym routine, even if it's only three days a week. That puts you loads ahead of most people. Work on eating better. Easiest method? Eat as much whole food as you can. The health benefits are so worth it. Start taking supplemental vitamins. Start cleaning yourself up in ways that make you feel good. Make your bed. Read books that you love or that intrigue you. Self-care is a huge part of self-love. So start taking care of yourself. If it feels really hard, you probably skipped the last step. So return to it and find your motivation to have good self-care. Now, this is where things can be tough. We're so guarded of our internal emotions and ideas, but facing the fear of doing things around others will be huge to proving that you're lying to yourself about what other people think. Whatever fears you have with other people, start trying them out. Afraid of dating and rejection? Put yourself out there. Afraid of showing something you're passionate about? Some sort of creative outlet? Put yourself out there. Afraid of telling people that you're hurt or you're depressed or that you're stuck? Put yourself out there. Also, start doing things for other people. What are you good at? What can you help others with? What can you do efficiently and effectively that others struggle with? Offer your skills and your knowledge. It creates huge strengths and connection and it will make you feel awesome and very capable. This one is kind of hand in hand with self-care, but do what you love. Find out what that is. Do what you love. Something that is truly about making you happy, filling your soul, making your heart swell. Sound sappy? Good, because it is. That sappy is what keeps your heart and mind connected. These are the things that have nothing to do with success or money. You do them because you love them. That's it. And when you have downtime, they are what you go to to feel awesome. For example, I built an AR-15. I love the thing. Why? Because I built it with my own hands. Most of us have huge confidence boost when we've built something for ourselves. I also have a ukulele. I still suck at it, but no matter what, the sound is, it's, it's so light and it's so pure. It always calms me down and makes me smile. I ride a motorcycle. Not everybody does. It is something that I do that separates me from others. I don't feel better than others, but I know that I'm brave enough to ride the street without a cage. It makes me feel confident saves me money and in a weird way it makes me want to interact with people on the street ever done high fives with someone in a passenger seat yeah that that happens motorcycles are a freedom for me these are only a few of my things but there is something that disconnects me from thinking that i have to be anything impressive to anyone they release me from expectation and being constantly on i dare you to play a ukulele and tell me it doesn't make you smile So let's summarize here. One, question who you are and what you do. Don't be convinced that everything you are now is what you want it to be. Two, question all of your friendships and relationships. They need to be supportive and challenging to who you want to become. If they're not, it's time to make moves. Three, set boundaries. Whatever you're surrounded by, make sure people understand who you are and what you will and will not tolerate. If they can't consider it, they are not your people. Number four, start reversing the conversation in your head. Remember, anything that doesn't just delete but replaces the bullshit, writing, mantras, affirmations, tasks, whatever works for you. Number five, good self-care. The things you put in your body, the physical routines you take on, They will drastically change how you think about yourself. Take care of your surroundings and the things that you love. Number six, do the things that you love. Whatever things make you become present, whatever things that connect you to joy and back to yourself. What soothes you, takes your focus, and makes you feel alive. Remember, they don't have to have anything to do with success or even something to show to others. Do it because you love it. Guys, Self-love is not some little woo-woo spiritual thing. We've just become so far disconnected from ourselves, it makes us uncomfortable as fuck, and we label it as something we're too good for. No one is really great at being human without some foundational level of self-love. 
Without it, it's just about impossible to have the confidence or motivation to be a part of this world. It's not about how loud your voice carries out into the world. It's about how real it is. And that's not done without loving who you are and why you do what you do. To the skeptical men, if you're not convinced, then you don't have to listen. But I dare you to question why you have unstable dramatic relationships. Why is it that you can't love the work you do? Why do you have anger issues? Or why do you have struggles with depression and anxiety? Loving yourself means you know yourself intimately. And that will not only change your trajectory in life, but the satisfaction in how you do it. I'm here for you on the other side of this mic and on the other side of misery. I got you, man. It's time to become whole. Stay strong and stay rebel-minded. Love. This is Zach. Out. Here we are again at the end. I'm starting to tear up a little bit. And I just want you to know that I'm going to miss you. And I appreciate you. And I love you. And I hope that whatever you're after, you keep fighting for it. Your experience is uniquely your own. And so that means so are the challenges that you face. Stay strong and don't let anyone diminish who you are or what you dream of being. As your friend and fellow flawed human, stay rebel-minded, my friends. Until next time.